All right, so we're in the fourth week of Redeeming the Cup, the series. I'm going to bring this as fast as I can because uh, we've got several that are going to be baptized in this service. And so the more amens you say, the faster I preach. Can I get an amen? Amen. Ooh, y'all are in a hurry. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, let's open our Bibles. Exodus chapter number six, verse number six. Exodus chapter six, verse number six. Uh, uh, you know, as a young pastor, I would have never stayed in the same passage for, for a month. I, I would have thought, well, they, they, they're, they're tired of that already. But I, a, a, as an older man now, realize sometimes you need to take your time and get to know something. In Exodus chapter six, we've been studying the four cups of promise that we have to drink from if we want to walk in freedom. These four cups of promise, the, the Israeli people, the, the Jewish people, remember every single year during their uh, Passover celebration. And it comes from this passage of Scripture. So let's identify the, the four cups, and then we'll, we'll dive into the message. I'm going to do my best to behave myself, but no promises. Exodus chapter 6, verse number 6 reads like this. Therefore say to the people of Israel, and I love what God says. He says, I am the Lord. How I many you know we serve the true and living God this one? Amen. He is Lord. Come on, give it the living God a praise. Amen. Amen. He says, these four promises the children of Israel grabbed hold of, and this is the first cup that we drank from. He says, he says, I will free you from your oppression. Cup number one, I will free you from your oppression. Now, we realize that this cup, this first cup, a few weeks ago when we began this study, the freeing you from your oppression is what God has chosen us. And that cup is the cup of sanctification. It's the cup where God says, you are mine. None other will do. I have chosen you. I have picked you out and set you aside as my own. Now, it's the cup of sanctification, not the cup of perfection. Because perfection would mean that none of us could drink from that cup. But the reality is this. You don't have to be perfect. It's just who, to whom do you belong. Yeah. Friday morning I got up. It was a holiday, so, you know, kids are out of school and those kind of things on. People are kind of quiet in my house, and I'm getting ready to go. As I'm getting ready to head out Friday morning, I go to do my morning ritual. I go to turn on my coffee pot. Come on now. Can I get an amen from anybody? And, and sometimes you just got to have that cup of coffee in the morning. I went to turn on that coffee pot, and I, 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 I turned it on, and everything was ready, and I reached for my cup. Daddy's cup, come on now. I reached for my cup, and my cup was not, it could not run it over because it wasn't there. And I was like, oh, somebody's going to die. Come on now. <laughs> Somebody has messed with my cup. And about that time, I heard Christina moving faster than she normally moves that early in the morning. And, and if it had been one of the kids, God helped them. But what am I supposed to say to her? Come on now. And she comes running in there and she says, I think I got it by accident. Come on. And, and I'm thinking there's four or five others just like it, but that one has my stains on it. Come on now. And, and I want my cup. And it's the one I've chosen. And, and it's the one that is sanctified, set aside for me. I looked at her and I said, well, I'll drink out of one of these others. Probably won't be as good. Come on now. <laughs> but, but the point was, I wasn't going to take her cup. She'd already been drinking out of away from her. But the thing was that it wasn't the cup that I had chosen. It wasn't the cup that I had deemed as mine. It wasn't that. And though the uh, coffee was just as good in another, what I'm trying to tell you is the cup of sanctification tells us this, that God could have chosen another, but he chose us. God, God could have saved somebody else, but he saved you and I. And there's nobody else that will do for him like you do. God is satisfied in you. That's the cup of sanctification. And then, and then and the second uh, promise is right there in the same way. He says, I will free you from your oppression. And then he says in the second cup, he said, I will, I will uh, rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. And we've learned this. And I'm going to say this every week during this series, that, that, that what we've learned is in the first cup, freeing you from your oppression and rescuing you from your slavery, I mean, that sounds kind of the same. But you see, the first cup's where he chose us. And he delivers us. But the second cup, is where God says, I brought you out of Egypt, now I'm going to get Egypt out of you. He says, I look, I'm looking inside of where you are. 
And there's some stuff you're still struggling with. It's kind of like I, I went down to the car wash yesterday. We had been at a new building that we're going to have to use while our buildings are being torn down. And we were at that building. The road's kind of dirty. And, and my truck was covered with just, just mess. And so I went down to the car wash, waited in line like everybody else was there for yesterday. And, 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 and all of a sudden I ran it through. And, and we were looking. And, and Charlie was even like, look at all the pretty rainbows all over the car and we were coming out and I, I, could, I just had this image that that, that that car wash had done a great job. And I got out of the car and I looked at my truck and boy, parts of it were gloom, gleaming just right, but dead center of the door there was a spot that had been missed. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't perfect. It was still dirty. Listen to me. You see, when God chooses us and sets us aside, he washes us clean and forgives us of all of our sin. But some of us still got some junk that needs to be dealt with. And so the second comes when he says, I'm going to deal with your junk. I'm going to help you get free. I'm going to help you learn what I can do in you when you drink from the cup of deliverance. And so God delivers us as we drink from that cup because, listen to me, if you look the same as you did before you prayed that prayer of salvation, you need to let God deliver you because he wants to change your life. The second cup was the cup of deliverance. The third cup we went to last week is where he says, I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. What this is telling me is that God didn't choose me and God didn't deliver me just to leave me where I was, that he has a purpose for my life. When you value something, you will exchange something. You will redeem it from its current uh, uh, situation to what you want it to be. And what you redeem it for, you esteem of great, equal or greater value. You bring it into your life. And I want you to understand that Jesus did not redeem you so that you could stay in your past and in your pain. Jesus redeemed you for a purpose. He loves you just the way you are. He loves you right where you are. But Pastor Don, you don't understand. I'm still struggling. I'm still going through things. And he said, you don't understand. I will redeem you with a powerful arm. Psalms 1835, we talked about last week where he said, I stoop down to make you great. In other words, God says, there is no valley too low. Come on now, there is no pit too deep. That I can't rescue you. And God redeems us. And when he redeems us, he sets us in a place of purpose. And so we drink from that cup of redemption that tells me that God's working in me. And all that he's been doing is not. Not just by accident, he's got a plan for my life. You'll either live on purpose or you'll live in pain. You have to make up your mind. And so today we come to the fourth and final cup from this series and the cup that the, the, the Jewish people drink from during Passover. Verse number seven. Every time we've read this, my heart has leapt. I will claim you as my own people. And I will be your God. The fourth cup, I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from your oppression in Egypt. Now, let me just read that, that, that promise one more time. He says, I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. Every time we've read that, I just want to go, praise God. I'm his and he's mine. And I get so excited about that. And that's what brings us to what the, the Jewish people call the cup of praise. The cup of praise. The fourth and final cup is the cup of praise. And, and, and to understand what they call it, they, 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 there's a church word that we kind of use a lot in our lives. And as a matter of fact, the other day I was standing with some people. They were speaking in German. And I don't know that much German. I know just enough German to get myself slapped. All right, I had some armor buddies teach me some German. Come on now. And, and I was over there one time, and, and, and that was the last time I'll ever speak German. Come on now. Uh, and, and, and so I, I, I just I wanted to communicate with them, and they were communicating in German. And so I just kind of leaned in and said, Hallelujah. Because that word works in any language. Come on now. And, and, and the word, why do you use the word hallelujah? Why would you use the word hallelujah? Now, let me just tell you some examples of hallelujah in your life, okay? You've been working on something for a long time, and you finally finish it. You put the last touch on it. You put the last piece in it. You, 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 you've got a huge project that's been an undertaking you never thought would get finished, and suddenly it's done. And what do you do? You just step back and you go, whoo, hallelujah. Oh, you're not getting it. Sorry. 
you're, it's Thanksgiving and you've got that one relative who's always late and the turkey's on the table and they finally pull up in the driveway and walk through the door and you go, whoo, hallelujah, we can finally eat. Some of you are getting it. Let me just go one more step further there. You walk by your kid's room and you don't know who has possessed them and you don't know if you need an exorcism or to rejoice, but it's clean. And you say, oh my God, hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> In other words, what you're saying is something has come to a place of fulfillment. And the fourth cup is the cup the Jewish people would say we now drink from the cup of Hallel and Hallel means to celebrate boast whoo I feel that or rave an exclamation of victory after one has experienced some level of fulfillment okay so in other words what they're saying at this point is this they're saying we remember that you chose us when you didn't have to. We were nothing but a bunch of ragtag slaves bound in a land that didn't even belong to us. And you chose us and you made us your own. And we say, hallelujah. They said, Lord, not only did you choose us, but then you brought us out. And you took a bunch of slaves who didn't know how to do anything. And you brought us into a wilderness. But when you brought us out, we were delivered. And we were warriors who could accomplish everything for the glory of God. And, and, See, some of you know where I'm going with this. And I, I've already preached it now for the third time, so I'm already fired up. But, but you see, the next thing they say is this. They said, God, we were a people who weren't a people, and you made us your people. You cleaned us up, and you set us on the right path, and you made us warriors, and you gave us a purpose in the nation. You gave us a purpose to do something great. You called us your own, God, and we drank from the cup of redemption. And so because of what you've done, now we drink from the cup of Hallel because we say, Lord, we're never going back. We're never going to live that way again. We're going to walk in the purpose you called us to, and we can say, look what God has done. Hallelujah. Come on now. Amen. I wish somebody just say hallelujah with me. Hallelujah. Look what God has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's brought us to a better place. He's brought us. Now, some of you are going, Pastor Don, how, what does this have to do with us? I want you to understand you can get to the place that you can rejoice at the cup of Hallel. You can rejoice with a cup of praise because you know that you know you bowed your knee or you lifted your voice and you called upon Jesus and you, Jesus, and you don't have to wonder if you're saved because you can know that you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior because you've settled the fact God's fulfilled that relationship in your life. But Pastor Don, you don't understand. I can't drink from the last cup because I, I'm still dirty. I've been through the wash, but, but I'm still struggling. But what you don't understand is the blood of Jesus meets no stain that he cannot deliver you from. The blood of Jesus meets no struggle that he can't bring you from. And you go, but Pastor Don, I, I failed him another time. Well, what you need to do is stop drinking from the cup of wine. See the play on the words there? Come on now. Some of you are taking a big sip of wine and, and, and you, oh, well, I've let God down. What you need to do is go over there and take a drink of the cup that says, He that the Son sets free is free indeed. I've been delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I've been set free and I'm not going to stay in this bondage another day. I'm free. I'm free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. And Pastor Don, I know God set me free, but, but I'm still struggling with yesterday. That's because you're not living on purpose. You're just letting life happen to you. Don't you understand that God didn't call you to let life happen to you? He made you a vessel of the power of the Holy Spirit so that life wouldn't happen to you, but you would happen to life. And when you walk into this world, let me tell you what he said. He said, you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation set aside unto God, peculiar of good works, chosen of the living God. Pastor Don, why are you so fired up? Don't you know you embarrass us? We bring guests and you come in here and preach like this. Well, you knew better. Come on now. Amen. You can't preach about a good Jesus without getting fired up. You can't preach about the love of God without something getting down inside of your soul. I feel this today because we've been redeemed for a purpose. If you feel like you have no purpose, you need to begin to drink from the purpose that God has chosen you for. And see, then finally we come to that cup of praise. 
Another word that could be used for this would be the cup of fulfillment. That God has fulfilled all of his promises to you. Some of you go, Pastor Don, I don't know if I'll ever make it that far. You're going to make it if you keep drinking from the right cups. You're going to make it. And you're going to look back and you're going to go, Hallelujah, I never dreamed this was possible. But the thing is, you've got to get full and you've got to get filled. In order to get fulfillment, you've got to get full and filled. Have you ever had a cup that you needed there to be something in? Come on now. And, and there was nothing there. I mean, it's sort of like when you, you go out to eat something spicy. Y'all not following me. I went to India, and they said, how do you eat all of this spicy food? I said, we have a church of Latinos. They feed me all the time. They believe the pastor needs to grow. Come on now, amen. <laughs> now, look, I took a group of our men out to a restaurant, and, and, and I've been trying to win this staff to Jesus. And, and I always tell them when they sit down, they set two sauces before you, and one's red and one's green. And here's what I say. Green means go. Red means stop. Green means go, red means stop. You got it? Green means? Go. Red means? Stop. So we sat down, and this one of our team members who's in this room, and I won't name him, but he knows I'm preaching about him. They set a plate down before him, and I, I thought, my gosh, he is a man. He took that red spoon and just dug it in and put it all over, all four of those tacos. Come on now. I thought, good, not alive. I, I'm going to watch this. <laughs> he went back over him. I said, did you hear me say red means stop, brother? He said, oh, I like it hot. <laughs> then they walked out with another plate that was supposed to be mine. And I said, that's not what I ordered. And he said, oh, that's what I ordered. I've been trying to win this restaurant owner to Jesus. I wasn't going to send that food back for nothing. They slid that plate over in front of me. I want you to know I could have preached hell, fire, and brimstone with a fiery vengeance on that day. My head was breaking out and sweat was running down my face. I, was, I mean, I, I, it was a challenge. I could not eat it. I was working on that thing. But the problem was... I guess the waiter didn't know that I was being consumed alive <laughs> because they never filled my cup. And when I went for the drink, there, it was not full. It, w it was nothing. <laughs> now let me tell you something. Some of you dragging yourself into church because you've been drinking from the wrong cups all week long. And then when praise comes in that's supposed to rejuvenate you, that's supposed to make you feel fulfilled, that's supposed to put joy down in your soul. Am I making sense to anybody? There's nothing in your cup. It's not full and it's not filled. Thus, you don't feel any fulfillment. But what you need to understand, the way that this cup gets filled is when you're drinking from these cups the way you're supposed to. Because when you walk through the door and you remember, hey, I messed up this week, but I'm still a blood-bought child of the living God, you're praying praise begins to rise and you begin to say you know what I may not be where I want to be yet but I'm not who I used to be and suddenly praise right am I making sense to anybody here this morning rises up within you and you go you know what I'm supposed to be lost and in a gutter but instead I boldly approach the throne of grace crying out Abba Father and joy floods your soul and you feel and you say you know what God I'm not there yet but hallelujah look how far I've come come on now can anybody give that kind of God a good praise. Amen. Now, I've got about half a sermon left. Actually, that was really just the introduction. If you won't tell those other two services, I'm going to wrap it up. I thought y'all would be happy with that. All right. Somebody come play something so I can't change my mind. Look at her, running. <laughs> God wants you to live your life to the fullest. He wants you drinking from all these cups so that when you come together, you bring the cup of Halal. 
the cup of praise. Because God has chosen us. Pastor Don, I, I want to believe this. Well, what you believe in is the lie of the devil because the Bible, Jesus said the thief comes with this purpose, to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. That's what God wants for you. God wants to give you life in all its fullness. The only way you're going to do that is when you drink from the right cups in your life. Some of you have been drinking from despair long enough. Shame long enough. Addiction long enough. Struggles and pain long enough. It's time to drink from the fact that God loved you, chose you, delivered you, gave you a purpose, and now you can find fulfillment there. Now, I want to go all the way to the closing of this message because there's three things you're going to have to have to walk in fulfillment. And these are going to become a part of the end of this service. The very first thing is you're going to have to make a contribution. See, some of you made a contribution in this, and when we give those numbers, you're going to celebrate. Now, it's going to be, for a church that the Lord has blessed like he's blessed ours, it, it, it's going to be significant. But what we've done is we've invited some smaller churches in on the, the project. And they're going to get to celebrate their contribution as a part of the whole. See, that's what I've been telling you throughout this. There's power in connectivity. There's power in walking as a whole. Because the next thing you're going to need to walk in fulfillment is community. You're going to need to know that you're a part of something greater than yourself. Because until you realize that, you're never going to really be fulfilled in life. And then, you're going to need to celebrate. Have you ever tried to celebrate by yourself? I mean, I've done it like, whoo. And people in the car next to me are like, what's wrong with him? You know? Last night, it's not my thing, but we went to Monster Jam. I, I don't understand what breaks and what works on a vehicle. But watching those little boys' eyes light up when the, a car flipped and caught on fire. <laughs> they jumped on them and they're like, Woo! <laughs> so you know what I did with them? Woo! <laughs> High five each other. We celebrated together. In just a few moments, some people are going to get in this water because they fill a community that they're safe with that made a contribution into their life and now they're ready to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. And they're going to testify to what Jesus has done. And you know what we're going to do with them? Woo! Come on now, amen. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate. But before we get there, the most important thing of all is going to happen. I want you to bow your heads right where you're seated. We're going to pray. How dare we give you a message without allowing you to make connection to what God can do. In just a moment, people are going to be baptized. People are going to be moving around you right now as as some are going to prepare for baptism. Would you just bow your heads and listen to my voice for just a moment? Better than that, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. God is here. God has chosen us. And he wants you to know what it feels like to drink from the cup of praise. Because you say, hallelujah, look what God has done. Some of you here would say, Pastor, I desperately, desperately want to give my life completely over to Christ. Some of you here today say, Pastor, there's some areas of my life that I need to be cleansed from. I know I'm saved, but I've got some places I need to be delivered from. Some of you are too busy living in past pain to live on purpose. God's wanting to change your life today, right where you are. I don't know if you're hearing exactly what I'm saying, but I'm talking to to each and every one that's here. Let me ask you this way. If you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm ready to really begin to live on purpose. Can I see your hand? Could you just hold it up high? Hands going up all over this place. Thank you. I'm going to pray for you guys in just a minute. Put those down. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need to be delivered. 
there's some things in my life that have a hold on me and I, I need to be set free. I need deliverance. Can I see your hand if that's you? Would you just hold it up? Hold it up. Don't, 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 don't be afraid. The hands are going up. But hold them up high. I want you to hold them up high. Hands all over this place. Thank you. Put those down. And here the most important moment of this whole day. There's some of you here that haven't drank from the cup of sanctification because you've never made Jesus your Lord. You've never let him pull you out and make you his own. This is the moment. This is the time. You say today, I want to know Jesus. Get your hand in there if that's you. I'm not going to embarrass you because I didn't embarrass anybody else, but I want to pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there others today that will join with these three that have their hands up in the air? Are there others? I'm waiting for you, waiting just a moment more. God's speaking to your heart. God's speaking to your life. Thank you. All right. I want you to join with me by standing. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and we believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we would be born again. And so today we're going to rejoice with these that are here, remembering what God has done, and we're going to celebrate in this time. This is going to be a prayer we're all going to pray together because somebody prayed it with us, and now we're going to pray it with them, then we're going to celebrate what God has done. Let's pray the prayer of salvation together today. Jesus, by faith, we rejoice in your promises. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And now, I repent of my sins. I give you my past, my present, and my future. All that I am belongs to you. I receive your grace. In Jesus' name, I am forgiven. From this moment forward, all that I have belongs unto Christ. In Jesus' name, I declare God is my Father, heaven is my home, and Jesus is my Savior. Father, I thank you for those that prayed that for the very first time today, and maybe those that prayed it as a prayer of rededication. Lord, I thank you, God, that you now seal them by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that they are now new creations set aside unto you. For those that said they need to drink from the cup of deliverance, I thank you that every addiction, every struggle has to fall under the mighty name of Jesus Christ by the power of God. And Lord, now by the power of your Holy Spirit, I thank you that we don't live in our past and we don't live in our pain, but we walk with purpose so that one day we might be able to all declare, Hallelujah, look what God has done. And now we celebrate your victory in Jesus' name. Amen. People gave their life to Christ today. Come on, celebrate today. Amen.